welcome to lecture 4 on module 1 of computer organization in which we will be discussing about the various performance issues in the computer system which includes the processor time processor clock and the basic performance equations the performance of a computer system is judged based on how quickly it executes the program for example we had considered an example in our uh, previous lecture in which we have to we have to take a input from a keyboard we need to process it and we need to print it using the printer in that case the performance of a device not only matters with with respect to the processor it also depends on uh, the speed of the printer as well as the uh, response from the input device so the total time required to execute an instruction is called as the elapsed time in order to consider the performance of a processor we have to consider only the time during which the processor is active and this time is called as the processor time the performance of a computer system mainly depends on the design of hardware, machine language instructions and the compiler. The hardware design, when, when it comes to the design of a hardware, it uh, includes the processor design as well as its interfaces and other parameters. When it comes to the machine language instructions, it is the instructions, how optimized the instructions are, how they are written and what are the tasks performed by the individual instruction also matters. Whereas the compiler, however we know that the functionality of a compiler is to compile the higher level language to machine language. While compiling, the, the efficient compiler has to compile the codes to a entire, entire program to a minimum number of machine language instructions. And this may not be same, it may vary from compiler to com compiler, which also affects directly on the performance of a system. In order to understand the concept of the performance in any of the processors, it is important to understand the flow of program as well. What happens here in this case is, as soon as the program is written, it is compiled and it has to be stored in a memory. As, as, as soon as it is stored in a memory, the, uh, the execution of the program starts and once the execution starts, it, doesn't, it does not need only the program, it also needs the data and all these things are stored in a memory. And from this memory, the data, the instructions as well as the data are, are, has to be transferred to the processor one by one for the execution. Meanwhile, some of the instructions, a copy of the instructions are placed in the cache this cache memory is associated with the processor so that if there is any instruction that is that has to be repeated again then you need not copy you know you need not transfer the same instruction from memory to the processor in order to avoid that we have we will have a copy of copy of instructions in the cache from the cache the processor will take the instruction and execute whenever there is a, a repetition of instructions to be executed which which helps in improving the sp speed of execution the processor cache memory sometimes are fabricated along with on a single chip along with the processor which improves the speed of processing internally we know that the instructions are executed one by one the speed of execution is maximized only when the transfer of data between the memory and the processor is minimized the delay that is taking place or the the latency in transfer of data from or data or instructions from memory to program is minimized the speed of execution will increase the one way we can do it is using the cache this way by storing the repeated instructions in the cache we can increase the speed of the performance 
performance of device also increases the processor circuits are controlled by the timing signals called a clock this timing signals or a clock plays a major role in the performance of a device and this clock is like a pulse or a we can say it as a heart of any microprocessors or microcontrollers without this clock there is no uh, this there will be no instruction that is that will get executed in order to execute these machine instructions the processor divides the action to be performed into a sequence of basic steps it may be a larger instruction it will be split into a single steps and a single clock on a single machine cycle it will perform one one step and it keeps on executing here the length of one clock cycle is an important parameter that affects the performance there is a basic step in order to perform that one single step there is a minimum number minimum number of clock cycle that is required that is length and it is denoted as p and inverse of that is the clock rate that is 1 by p what is measured in cycles per second in standard electrical terminology it can be written as cycles per second or normally hertz the frequency can be represented in terms of hertz and such 500 million cycles per second is usually abbreviated as 500 megahertz or 1250 million cycles per second is abbreviated as 1000 or 1.25 gigahertz just imagine 500 millions cycles per second that means you we usually in case of any of the microprocessors or microcontrollers 12 cycles are considered as one machine cycle and in order to perform one basic step we need one machine cycle so we here there are 500 million cycles per second if if the clock rate is 5, 500 megahertz and if it is 1.25 gigahertz it is 1. Point, uh, it is still higher two times more than two times faster so what happens means you can you can even analyze the speed at which the uh, the instructions are being executed at a fraction of seconds there are thousands of instructions that will be executed and even that we we, we sometimes call it as we will have a lag the corresponding clock periods are 2 and 0.8 nanoseconds clock period means to execute one particular one one basic step the time requ time required to perform or to execute one basic step is either 2 or 0.8 nanoseconds based on this if it is 500 megahertz it will take 2 nanoseconds if the clock speed is 1.25 gigahertz then it will take 0.8 nanoseconds more the clock cycles per second more number of instructions gets executed that means lesser the period required to execute a, a basic step this is how the processor clock will affect the performance of a device it it directly affects the performance of device lower the clock frequency larger the time taken to execute a code larger the clock frequency lesser the time required to execute the code and again looking at this you may say that we can provide a frequency which is much more higher than this but it is not possible again we need to have a corresponding hardware that supports this particular clock frequency so all the hardwares will have its own limitations in terms of the operating speed the hardware devices will have its own speed at which it can operate based on the hardware we need to choose the clock cycles required to execute a program let us consider any any task or any program that has to be executed that is written in the higher level language to understand the basic performance equation here let t be the processor time processor time means we have uh, defined it as the time required or or it is the time during which the processor is active it need not be a time taken to execute the entire code 
the time take required to execute the entire code is the elapsed time it is not the elapsed time the t is the processor time only the time during which the processor is active is called as the processor time let t be the processor time the compiler generates the machine language into the object program that corresponds to a source program there is a source program that is written in a higher level language that will be converted into a machine language object program using a, a compiler now let us assume that there are n number of machine language instructions you have written some uh, um, for example some 50 or 100 lines of code in a higher level language it once it is compiled once it is compiled let me assume that it will be uh, it will be reduced to some or it will be converted into some 50 or 55 machine instructions that total number of machine instructions will be n the number n is the actual number of instruction exe execution that has to take place and it is not necessarily the number of machine instructions in the object program once it is converted it will be converted into a machine language code machine language code a single machine language code can be split into two instructions during the execution so based on that the total number of instructions that has to be executed is represented as n the basic performance equation t is represented as n into s by r where the t is the processor time n is the number of instructions or number of machine instructions s is the basic steps average number of basic steps needed to execute one machine instruction there are many many machine instructions each machine instruction will be converted into a basic steps the average number of basic steps required to execute one machine cycle is represented as yes and r is the clock rate that is r cycles per second now this t the performance parameter t for any application program is much more important than any parameter such as n s r this is this t the processor time t is the one which affects directly the performance of a device which which by which we can judge the performance of a device considering the basic performance equation to achieve the higher performance the computer designer has to reduce the value of t lesser the t faster the execution which means we need to reduce the value of n and s and we need to increase r however there is a limitation in increasing the r uh, as we discussed in our previous slides r is nothing but the clock rate and uh, we cannot as such increase the clock rate beyond a certain level because it is dependent on the hardware that is present in a computer system the hardware has its own limitation in terms of the other option is by reducing the value of n and s n is nothing but when you when you are writing a program in higher level language if you convert that into a assembly language code then there will be there there we will come into the actual values of n and s now this depends on the compiler if the compiler is very efficient then it it has it should have the capacity to reduce the n value value that is when it converts from higher level language to the machine language the number of machine instructions should be very less for an efficient compiler it, even though it cannot reduce it uh, beyond a certain level but it has to be in an optimized way if it also affects on the next parameter that is yes 
if the number of instructions are number of machine instructions are less uh, then the value of s automatically decreases and there is also an option the when when a compiler converts a higher level language to a machine language it also has to consider reducing the complexity of an instruction thereby it reduces the value of s if the complexity of an instruction is reduced when it when the each instruction is converted to a basic step the number of basic steps or the average number of basic steps will be reduced thereby reducing the value of s yes. by optimizing this by optimizing the value of n and s yes, th this can be done by a compiler and based on the compiler that that is used to convert a machine the higher level language to the machine language we can reduce the value of n and s thereby increasing the thereby decreasing the value of t and increasing the value of the performance